Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a very interesting topic known as elastic eyepiece. Let's begin. Okay, so before we talk about elastic eyepiece, I'm going to show you something that I'm very excited about. And that is a new course that I launched on Udemy, which is known as Amazon EC2 Bootcamp. Let me show you. All right, so here's the course page. I'm on udemy.com and this is the URL of that course, udemy.com forward slash Amazon hyphen EC2. And this is a brand new course that I launched, Amazon EC2 Bootcamp, which also includes elastic load balancers and auto scaling groups. This course is designed for everyone who's interested to master EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud. And it is aimed at all the different user levels, beginner, intermediate, and expert. You can see over here the description of this course. It covers EC2, elastic load balancers, and auto scaling groups. All the topics that are covered are listed out over here. And there's a couple of topics that I'm currently recording, which is network load balancers and auto scaling groups, application load balancers already recorded, and it should be going live in a couple of days. It has um, six hours of on demand video full lifetime access you can access it on your cell phones and your computer screens 30 day no questions asked money back guarantee with a certificate of completion and it also has a lot of videos available for preview so if you come down over here you'll be able to see all these videos which are available for preview so check it out and I also have a discount code for you guys which is available in the description of this video Okay, now let's come back to the discussion of elastic IPs. So what's an elastic IP? Well, an elastic IP is a static public IPv4 address which is reachable from the internet. So when you boot up an EC2 instance, you also get a public IP, but that is not fixed. If you shut down your EC2 instance and you start it again, the IP address changes. That is known as a public IP according to the AWS terminology. If you want a static IP, a static public IP which does not change, we can go for what is known as Elastic IP. Elastic IP addresses are not associated with your instances. In fact, they are associated with your AWS accounts and then you associate them with your instances. With an Elastic IP address, you can mask the failure of an instance or software by rapidly remapping the address to another instance in your account. So let's say one of your instance has an elastic IP and all of a sudden it stops working and you want to route all of that traffic to another instance. You simply remove that elastic IP and associate that with another instance. Right now as we speak, elastic IP addresses for IPv6 is not supported. However, for the latest information you should always refer to the AWS documentation. To use an elastic IP, you must first allocate it to your AWS account and then you can associate with an instance or the interface. When you associate an elastic IP address with an instance or its primary network interface, the instance's public IPv4 address, which means the address which it originally had, is released back to the Amazon's pool of public IP addresses. And then we cannot reuse that address. We can dissociate an elastic IP address from a resource and then reassociate back to another resource. The interesting part is that the dissociated elastic IP address remains allocated to your account until you explicitly release it back. An elastic IP address is for use in a specific region only, which means if you obtain an elastic IP, let's say in the Sydney region, you cannot use it in the Mumbai region. It's a region-specific resource. To ensure efficient use of elastic IP addresses, a small hourly charge is imposed if an elastic IP address is not associated with a running instance or if it is associated with a stopped instance or an unattached network interface. When you read this for the first time, this might sound a bit confusing. Why am I getting charged if it's associated with a non-running instance? Well, the point is public IP addresses or public IPv4 addresses are very, very scarce. We are short of them. So AWS wants to make sure that you use that efficiently. So if the elastic IP is associated with a running instance, they don't charge you. 
but if it's not associated with the running instance, they charge you an hourly fee. When you associate an elastic IP address with an instance that previously had a public IPv4 address, the public DNS host name of the instance will change to match the elastic IP. Let me show you all of this on the AWS console. Alright, so I'm back over here and you can see that I have a running EC2 instance and it has a public IP over here, 13.232.61.198. Notice the public DNS name. The public DNS name also has that IP address embedded in it. But the problem is, if I shut down the instance and start it again, this IP would have changed. So, I'm going to associate an elastic IP. What we do is, we go down over here to elastic IPs, and we say allocate new address. And click on allocate. At this point, this elastic IP has been allocated to your AWS account, not to your instance. You can see the instance column is empty. So next, we need to associate with an instance. So we go to actions, and we say associate the address. You can associate with an instance or a network interface. At this point, I only have one running instance with one interface, so it would not make a difference at all. However, if you had an instance with multiple interfaces, then you might want to use network interface. Right now, I'm going to say instance and select my running instance, and then I'm going to select my private IP of that instance, and I'm going to say associate. Click on close. So this is the IP 13.126.85.72. If I go back to instances, you can see that that IP has been associated over here, 13.126.85.72, and it also shows up over here under elastic IPs. And you'll notice that the public DNS name has also been changed to reflect that IP address. What about the public IP that was already there before we associated this one? Well, it's released back to the pool and we can never get it back. Now that we have an elastic IP, we can shut down this instance and start it as many times as we want. The IP will not change. If this instance has to go down for maintenance or backup, we can simply remove this and map it to another EC2 instance. If we wanted to remove it, we can go down over here to elastic IPs and say dissociate the address first. But at this point, AWS will start charging you because it is not associated with a running instance. So what you want to do is you go to actions and release it back to the pool. And now you'll not be charged for it. Well, that's the simple concept of elastic IPs. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.